Has, has anyone heard about Flash Duck? Anyone? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm Grant. I'm the founder and CEO of Flash Duck. Uh, July 7th, the ink is still wet. We sold to Shutterstock, a public company, for $50 million. Um, thank you. Thank you. So I based this talk on three things that I learned during that journey. Uh, and then we're going to play a fun true and false game. Right? Who's excited? Nobody. So Flash Talk, I founded it in 2014. Um, we are located in Toronto, Canadian startup. We raised $3 million in seed funding, uh, all from individual angel investors. And the problem we're solving is helping enterprise marketers create content faster, cheaper, better. Content is the core of every brand, and we believe the current way of creating it doesn't work very well. It's expensive, it's slow, it's cumbersome, it's agency, it's stock photography. So we built a platform to solve that. It's called the Flash Talk Platform. It's a subscription-based model that leverages a global network of contributors. We have 2,000, 2,000, not yet, 200 enterprise B2C marketers and some B2B, and we're currently employing 115 lovely Torontonians and a few Americans. And we were acquired in July for $50 million. So we're going to play true or false. I'm going to put a statement, and then we're going to gauge, based on my mistakes, whether or not you would have made that mistake. Who's pumped? Yes. The primary reason for startup failure is bad judgment. Who thinks that's true? Nobody. Who thinks that's false? Everybody. The answer is true. Yeah. So, so what I've seen is I, I don't think it's capital or bad ideas. I think it's prioritizing what to do next. Being a, a startup founder is a very lonely job. You have no boss. No one really cares about you. Uh, so for you to actually make a decision about what to do next is critical. There's a list of thousand things that you could do. So when I started Flash Talk, I had this idea, and I'm like, first thing I need to do is go out and raise money. Uh, so I talked to this guy named Simon Mansell, who just exited a company, sold the sprinkler, and he said, that's a terrible idea. You should not do that. You should take your idea and try to sell it. Um, and so rather than spending time raising money with just an idea and no track record, I uh, took that same sales deck and, and sold it officially to uh, Anheuser-Busch Budweiser for the first client, $66,000. I thought I had struck gold and then turned to my flash talk team and said, please deliver. Uh, and Mindy over there delivered everything. Uh, and through that process, what I learned was my initial idea was flawed. It was directionally right. And so if I would have raised money and I would have built the wrong product, take it to market, I probably would have wasted six to 12 months. Next, it's all about content marketing and tech crunch. True or false? True, you're wrong, it's false. it's false. So a few customers, initial traction, raised a bit of seed money, write a blog, get press, everything else will come. Did not work. I wrote a blog about rights management. Who doesn't want to read about rights management? <laughs> Everybody does. It took me two weeks and it was boring and I didn't even realize then and it took me two weeks. Um, no one read the blog, we got like 30 people. I had a board of directors who wanted to see sales. Um, so the next thing was, let's get a, a press release. And so actually Mindy, PR background was able to do that, got us a call with a reporter from TechCrunch. Five minutes. If, if someone books a meeting for you with five minutes, they think they're better than you. Just a note. Five minute call. Explain Flash Doc. And he said, that's a terrible idea. It's going to fail. I'm not going to cover it. I was like, man, that's harsh. Uh, so now I had a couple customers, a, few bit, a little bit of money, and nothing else. So, so what do you do? We knew who our target customer was. We knew who the target company was. And so rather than sit there trying to write blogs and hoping to attract people, we'll go out and get them. Uh, so I hired a sales intern and said, here's our customer, here's the companies, here's the sales deck, go book meetings. And he did that. He, he broke every rule in the sales TO playbook that I'm sure you'll learn about. He bought lists, he cold emailed, and he got better and better and better at it, but it worked. And it started to drive predictable, repeatable revenue, which was the foundation of our business and still remains the foundation of our business today. Um, what was I going to say? I can't remember. Anyway. Oh, we're B2B. So if you're not B2B, you can ignore that slide. Um, last, culture is bullshit. It's all about winning. So when I started Flash Talk, I didn't really appreciate what culture was. It was an abstract thing about foosball tables and free lunches. Um, I didn't really sink in. So I learned about that very clearly through the, the Flash Talk evolution. So in 2014, there was like four or five of us trying to solve this problem. Never talked about culture. Everyone was aligned. If someone was being a dick, you would just tell them they're being a dick, and that's just how it would work. 2014, four, four or five people. 2015, we grew to 15 people. 
kind of the same thing. It's like it's kind of small. Everyone behaves a certain way. Everyone's bought into what you're doing. Then in 2016, we, we grew to 80 people. So we went from 15 to 80. And that's when the wheels kind of started to fall off. Um, I started to look around and realize that like what that person was doing just didn't seem right. Um, you know, we were hiring people that didn't seem to align and, and you know, after thinking about it, realized that how can we expect people to behave we want them to behave if we've never actually defined it. And we did this exercise, we're 80 people, where we went out and defined our mission and our values. And we did it with the early employees and the, and the leadership team and said, hey, what brought us to this point and what's gonna take us forward? And that was the mission and that was the values. And so we did that and it changed everything. We could then hire people that were excited by the mission. And if you weren't excited by the mission, it's fine, but just don't work at Flashdoc. And then abiding by these cultural cornerstones that told them how to behave. It's things like empowerment and passion and integrity, things that are very important to Flashdoc. And if someone is doing a great job, fantastic. Uh, and if not, we can use that as a framework. And there's tons of decisions that we make every day based on those values. So lesson is, if you, if you work at a company and you don't know what your values are and your mission is, find out, it's super important. And if you're starting a company, define it early. Don't wait till you're 80 people, because that just kind of sucked. Oh, false, damn it. That's it, thanks. Questions? As an uh, early founder who tasted failure in the beginning, what were your um, methods for coping with this? That's a good question. Uh, startups is one of the hardest things you could ever do. Um, you have to find your release. So my release was exercise. Like it kept me sane. Uh, and I eat well, sleep, and it's a marathon. And if you, uh, if you don't have your release, you're fucked. I'll ask first you. off, oh, sorry. Did someone go first? Okay, me? Okay. Uh, first off, I just wanted to acknowledge you. That was awesome. Love your energy. Um, two, I'm curious, what's next for you? You know, you built this up and you stole it off. Like, what's your plan? Yeah, that's yeah, a really, it's a good question. It's a really odd feeling. Like you, when you go through the, so, the process of selling a company, you can't think about it because up until the day it's signed, it may not happen. And so you have to be 100% focused on your business. But then when it happens, it's like, oh, now I have a boss and I work as part of this big company and it completely changes your perspective. So the answer is, I don't know. Uh, I know that building a company was an amazing, life-changing experience and I want to do it again. Uh, I may take a vacation first though. Totally. <laughs> Enjoy. Uh, con uh, congratulations on your, your exit. Um, in theory, you could have waited a few more years and sold for 200 million. Why did you sell? Yeah, that's another good question. Good questions. You've got a good group here. Um, so there's a, lot, there's a lot of factors. So when you sell a company, you've got to take into consideration a couple different constituent groups. You've got to take into consideration your shareholders. You've got to take into consideration your employees. And you've got to take into consideration your customers. So it's not like there's this market where you can say, hey, I want to sell, and like you've got a bunch of buyers. Um, timing is everything. And we were profitable, we were standalone, we were growing quickly, and we had no intent to ever sell. Then I met John Oranger, the CEO of Shutterstock, and you know he built the first billion dollar company in New York. It's based on content, they had 200 sales reps, but more importantly, they had a mission that was friendly to our mission. He wants to change the way organizations create content. And so for me, I could get to the outcome that I set out with the team from day one, which was to change a brand and change how they create content with John uh, and not necessarily go through the VC route. So decided to do that. But it was a, a very tough decision. Last question. Thanks, Grant. Um, quick question. You had mentioned that your original sales strategy was cold emailing and cold reach out. Yep. And you said that it took a little bit of time for the emails to trickle down. How long did it take? Yes, yeah, so it was probably it was probably like a, like two quarters. Um, so the first quarter we spent, you know, going to LinkedIn, like cold emailing, and it just didn't like emailing 20, 25 people a day. And then I remember the day Jeremy, he's still at the sales team, uh, so he's still Flashdoc, he's on the product team, came up to me and said, uh, I want to buy this marketing list, cost five grand. And uh, we had 50,000 in the bank, and I was like, yeah, oh, that's 10% of the cash. That seems like a lot. 
uh, but I said, yeah, we don't have a choice, do it. Uh, and it was basically a cold email list, and he, he, he got a license to a tool called Outreach and set up sequences against different job profiles, and it, it, it started to work. We got one meeting, we got two meetings, we got five meetings, we got 10 meetings. So then we started to kind of cycle through. Eventually, we realized it wasn't scalable and it wasn't the right way to do it, but it did generate a lot of early revenue and a lot of early traction for us. I think the advantage that we had is we knew who our customer was right from the get-go. We were selling to an enterprise marketer. We knew the pain point so we could target them. We didn't build a product and then hope to find a customer, which I think would make that, that strategy a little challenging. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks.